located just south of Owendaw, South Carolina, on Highway 17, the Center for Birds of Prey addresses environmental issues that really affect birds throughout the world. Jim Elliott, when we talk about birds throughout the world and environmental issues, specifically, what are we saying? What we're saying is that birds provide us, because they're so environmentally sensitive, they provide us with wonderful insight as to what problems may be occurring in that natural world of ours. And when you talk about the problems, of course, a lot of it is associated with the health of some of these birds. You all are one of the few centers in the world. You've got your own hospital. Not many bird hospitals exist in the United States, do you? That's true, uh, Roland, and we've got one of the major medical centers for birds of prey here in the country. And uh, we're approaching almost 6,000 birds that have come through the center now, and uh, we saw 500 birds from throughout South Carolina just last year. And so you actually bring these birds in after they've been wounded or they've been damaged somehow, and you really bring them back to good health, don't you? That's the intent. We are now releasing the majority of the birds that we treat, but you know, in addition to that, uh, as you said, what, what we're doing is gaining that insight from these birds that come in the door so that we know What's occurring out there, whether it's purposeful or not, we still see birds that are gunshot, we see birds that are poisoned, and all those kinds of things that we need to know about and address. Okay, let's talk about some of the specific birds of prey, beginning with my favorite, of course the favorite of all Americans, the bald eagle. What a majestic bird. Yeah, it's a favorite of all of ours, I think. It's just, uh, you know, it's been an iconic symbol for us forever. And uh, South Carolina is very fortunate in that the population here has done very well over the last 30 years due to a lot of effort by a lot of folks. And we've gone from 13 pairs to over 280 now here that, that uh, breed in the state. And you have these eagles and other birds on exhibit as part of your educational efforts. And taking a look at these eagles, looks like you've got two look just about alike, but one quite different. What's the difference? They are different. These, these birds, as we typically think of them, have that, that outstanding white head and white tail and that very dignified um, appearance. But young birds, up until about the age of five, are really all dark. They're, they're often confused with golden eagles, as a matter of fact, because they don't get that white head and white tail until later in life. I know the Atlanta Falcon football team would be proud of the Falcons. You have a large number of them. Yeah, we do. You know, falcons, again, are one of those special um, species that we focus on here at the center because they're so unique and, and exemplify so much how, how birds of prey have refined and adapted to all the habitat things that, that we're able to provide for them in a way that, that causes us to realize just how careful we need to be in order to have them around. Well, I'm going to say a word that you don't like to hear, and that's buzzard. Well, <laughs> it has its place, but not where we usually apply it. And uh, what do you call them? Vultures. Technically, the birds that we all grew up calling buzzards and still do in many cases really technically are vultures. And uh, that name started when the Europeans came over. The largest bird that they were accustomed to seeing was, in fact, a buzzard, which is uh, more like our red-tailed hawk. I understand we have two different types of vultures in South Carolina. That's correct. We have a black vulture and turkey vulture, and they're similar in terms of their body shape, but there's a little bit of size a difference. The turkey vulture is a little bit larger, and there are some technical differences that we deal with them every day would, would know about, but they're one of the most important, two of the most important birds we have in the ecosystem. Well, Jim, here at the center, it looks like you have plenty of owls. I had no idea there's so many different types of owls throughout the world. Yeah, it is fascinating, and we're all sort of drawn to them because they are so unique, and we don't get to see owls up close very often. Of course, part of their job is to remain uh, not conspicuous because they're more active during uh, evening hours and things, typically speaking. So this is an opportunity for us to see those birds up close when we wouldn't have a way to do it otherwise. Well, when we think of owls, generally we think of owls being in a tree. Uh, I had no idea that there's an owl that likes to go in the ground. What is this little old bird doing running around on this mound? Well, it's where it lives and gets its food. It's just one of those things. That, one of the wonderful things about these birds is they have all adapted in a way for them to exploit some niche out there that, that allows them to survive in a most efficient way. And these little birds, the borrowing owls as we know them, spend most of their time on the ground where they feed on insects and things, and they actually have a unique habit of, of subterranean um, cavities that they, that they spend a lot of time in for safety. I want you to describe exactly how you all handle these birds, because I know on the days you're open to the public, you all put on exhibits when these birds fly off and come back. It's really interesting to see these birds uh, being handled this way. 
What we do is really train these birds uh, to do only what they would do in the wild. There are no tricks, there's nothing unique about it that, that they wouldn't do ordinarily. Uh, but we've trained them in a way that they do it in close proximity to us so that we can appreciate it and understand it better. Well, Jim, we certainly appreciate you taking the time to be with us here on making it grow. And your center is really a, a treasure for South Carolina and a treasure for the United States and what you all do for the birds and checking out things as they affect the environment. I know we've got some people that would like to uh, talk to you about the Center for Birds and Prey. What's the best way for them to reach you? The best way for them to get us is through telephone 843-971-7474, or they can visit our website at www.thecenterforbirdsandprey.org. Well, thank you once again, and I, I'm gonna change my vocabulary. I'm not gonna call a buzzard a buzzard anymore. I'm gonna call him a vulture. <laughs> That's a good idea, Ron, good. I hope you stick to it. Thank you. <laughs>